Hello, uh, this is I Go Travel with uh, Don Barnett, and we are headed for the Yukon. We're going to, uh, in this travelogue, get up as far uh, as uh, Whitehorse. And uh, I'm uh, very, very excited to get going. We're uh, going to see some uh, uh, rams and wild sheep along the way, and uh, I believe that uh, we'll uh, visit a, a, a few old mining communities, uh, and we'll end up in the Whitehorse. And I uh, just couldn't be happier. I, I'm very keen to get going. And uh, I can tell you I'm a singing my song, for I'm happy as can be, because I'm heading for the good old Yukon. And there's one more thing that I know. When it's springtime in the Yukon, it's 40 below. We left uh, mile post one and made it up here along the BC Yukon border. I would guess these uh, rental trucks on the highway here are people moving to the Yukon or uh, to somewhere in Alaska. More highway, yeah, but do you uh, see that tiny light colored dot on the side of the road, uh, just where the road bends in the distance? I think I saw it move. That could be an animal or uh, maybe a person on the side of the road, just outside the guard rails. Let's go take a look. You betcha, I knew it, a mountain sheep. Let's go uh, a little closer before it goes away. A uh, bighorn uh, ram's horns uh, can weigh more than the rest of his bones in his whole body. Uh, rams settle arguments by ferocious headbutting. Uh, their hoofs have a hard outer rim with a soft depressed center that gives them excellent traction on the, the steep uh, rocky terrain that they hang out in. They love uh, to come down to the highway uh, and lick salt that highway maintenance crews uh, have spread uh, on the highway to melt ice uh, on the winter roads. Uh, these guys here that were up on the rock cliffs uh, just above the highway uh, uh, they're young ones, and they're called kids. This one here uh, looks like a, a female, and the females are called ewes. This one looks like a young ram, uh, or a young male, because his horns are not fully grown out. Uh, uh, these animals have keen eyesight and can jump uh, up to uh, six meters from ledge to ledge. This is the community of Watson Lake along the highway where travelers uh, for many years have put up signs from their homes. It uh, started in the early 1940s when the highway was being built. Uh, a lonely soldier put up the first uh, sign and it has been growing ever since. It was uh, fun looking for signs uh, near your home uh, place. Uh, if you're up here, uh, by all means, bring along a sign. There is always room uh, for at least one more. This is the long bridge over uh, Nitsulin Bay at uh, Teslin Lake. As you can see, uh, it is capable of handling any sized uh, or uh, type of uh, traffic. These uh, historic uh, photographs uh, show that uh, bridge building was an integral part of the Alaska Highway construction. The construction was not without setbacks, uh, as illustrated in the lower right of this photo where the bridge collapsed. Uh, we are getting near Whitehorse uh, as we pass through uh, this uh, southern lakes country, which is headwaters of the Yukon River that flows northward. We'll stop by the places underlined in red on the map from uh, right to left. Uh, these are Teslin, Atlan, and Carcross. Then we'll drive north to Whitehorse. We will not go south to Skagway, Alaska, uh, which is in the lower left of the map. That is another whole story and another travelogue. These large finger-like lakes uh, uh, are, is, is the land of the inland Clinket and Tagish First Nations uh, indigenous people. Teslin and Atlan, uh, both uh, just south of the Alaska Highway, 
originated as remote pioneer mining communities. Uh, they are still in a remote area, particularly uh, when you come from the south. Uh, we had no trouble parking overnight uh, anywhere uh, along the road. Atlan uh, is another uh, partly abandoned, uh, scenic, uh, small, remote, uh, former uh, mining community. Uh, there was uh, still evidence of uh, hard times in pioneer times. Uh, uh, here you can see where uh, no insulation in the early days uh, meant that often rags uh, were stuffed between the logs uh, to serve as uh, insulation and at least keep uh, the wind out, if not uh, so much the cold. I didn't uh, realize it at the time, but when I took this photo inside of uh, an abandoned uh, old miner's uh, log shack, uh, I accidentally uh, got a good photo of this uh, spider web. The uh, north uh, in the summertime is no stranger to bugs and flies or uh, endless numbers of mosquitoes. Uh, here are a few more examples of uh, some of the uh, older uh, buildings, and, and some were still open for business, but most were uh, uh, closed up uh, for the most part uh, for summertime use only. Uh, with the uh, coast uh, only about uh, a range, a mountain range away, uh, the vegetation we noticed got uh, greener and a little more lush. Carcross uh, is uh, short uh, for uh, the word caribou crossing, once the community's name. Uh, we showed uh, some of these uh, colorful uh, Carcross Tagish uh, First Nations uh, buildings uh, in one of the Klondike uh, Gold Rush travelogues. Uh, today, the Tagish uh, and Tlingit people work at uh, jobs like uh, pilots, big game and uh, fishing gu guides, government employees, teachers, and uh, health care workers. A uh, modern uh, locomotive, a train, uh, runs the same tracks uh, these days, uh, carrying uh, a lot of tourists who come to Skagway. Uh, many of them come in by uh, cruise ships. Here is the old uh, hotel in Carcross. It uh, looks vacant now, a mere shadow of what it once was. I worked as a tourist guide uh, through this country uh, in the uh, early 1960s. And uh, when we came to Carcross, uh, the hotel was a buzzin'. And they had a very well-known, well-loved uh, parrot in the, in the town, in the, in the hotel. And so when I came back years later, uh, I inquired, uh, you know, uh, where's the parrot? Was he still around? And uh, that, that parrot had a story. It was uh, one of two birds owned by the captain of the mighty British battleship, the Hood, of uh, World War II fame. The captain uh, left one bird, this one, in uh, San Francisco with someone he knew and took the other one with him. Well, we know what happened to the Hood. In a death battle with uh, Germany's best battleship, the Bismarck, the mighty Hood was sunk, uh, and the captain and his parrot were lost. The uh, parrot uh, left in San Francisco eventually made its way to Carcross and lived to old age in the hotel. Everybody in town knew and loved this talking parrot. I was uh, told that the parrot had died and was buried with honors in the local cemetery. I uh, searched that uh, little cemetery for two different days, uh, but I could not find the parrot's grave. Uh, when I was uh, looking, uh, I noticed uh, that in some graves uh, it seemed to be a custom uh, uh, to uh, leave something of the deceased person's uh, uh, material goods uh, at the gravesite. Uh, here uh, you can see the guy's uh, hat and uh, boots. And uh, it looks like uh, this person uh, obviously uh, was a miner. Uh, here's another piece of evidence of uh, the apparent uh, local custom here. Uh, 
these two people seem to be uh, airplane uh, pilots, or maybe they were killed in uh, the same airplane crash. Two days of searching, and I finally found the parrot. I had been looking for some reason for a big statue and had overlooked this plaque in one corner of the cemetery. Uh, let's uh, read uh, the parrot's plaque together. It says, Polly, born 1850, died 1972. So it really it looks like the parrot was uh, 122 years old uh, when it died. Let's see what the rest of it says. Let's read it together. Uh, Under this sod lies a sourdough parrot. Its heart was gold, pure 14 carat. Polly now can spread her wings, leaving behind all earthly things. She ranks in fame as our dear departed, just reward for being good-hearted. And notice the coins uh, and the dice at the bottom and uh, the, the keys in the top right uh, corner. Uh, these are tokens of appreciation uh, for this uh, locally famous bird. People in this town loved their parrot. Before uh, going uh, north to Whitehorse, uh, uh, we drove uh, just a few kilometers south uh, toward Skagway on the coast. We will go to Skagway, but that is another travelogue when we visit the communities along the coast of the Alaska Panhandle. This is the uh, Canada Customs uh, building at the border. A lonely place, uh, but uh, big enough uh, to do the job. We went uh, through uh, U.S. Uh, Customs a little later and drove a bit on the U.S. side. Just look at uh, the height of these measure sticks for snow. Uh, this place uh, gets a lot of winter dumps of snow. Here is a couple of uh, photos of the rail line uh, that runs from Skagway uh, through Carcross uh, and on north uh, to Whitehorse. The Whitehorse uh, end is not used as much as it was at one time. And uh, these uh, elevated uh, toilets uh, for uh, railway workers and a few winter tourists, I guess, uh, maybe hunters, uh, tell something about the depth of snow uh, uh, fall that they get here in the winter. Well, we turned around uh, before getting to Skagway, and uh, we're now back on the Alaska Highway, headed for uh, Whitehorse. Good roads uh, and good bridges are the order of the day, and it doesn't take long before uh, we're pulling into uh, the community called Whitehorse. The uh, old uh, Whitehorse Hotel, once the bell of the ball, when I was there years ago, was uh, now an abandoned building. The town has a city uh, tourist uh, short rail line that runs along the banks of the Yukon River. Also uh, along the river, uh, sort of a tourist area, is uh, the old abandoned home of Robert Service, uh, the poet. I told you about Robert Service's poems of the Klondike Gold Rush uh, on some of those travelogues uh, that we uh, did on the Gold Rush. So uh, there we are. Uh, we've made it to uh, the Yukon uh, to Whitehorse, halfway up to Fairbanks. It's been a long time since I've been to Fairbanks, so I'll show you a few pictures, some of my old pictures when I escorted the tours up there in uh, the mid-60s. But uh, from uh, Whitehorse here, we'll probably uh, head down Highway 37 uh, back through northern uh, British Columbia. But in the meantime... Uh, Keep uh, uh, in tune, uh, hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up and uh, we can uh, continue to make these uh, travelogues. This is uh, I Go Travel with uh, Don Barnett. Adios.